If you're someone who's ever changed the seed on your hardware wallet, or perhaps you're someone who has multiple hardware wallets and has your funds stored across multiple seeds, can you make sure uh, that you're not accidentally sending funds to a seed that perhaps you no longer have? Just over the last couple of weeks, there have been a few instances of people who've been getting themselves into trouble uh, because they have lost track of which seeds their funds were stored on and accidentally thrown out a uh, seed phrase backup which held all of their crypto. This video is particularly focused towards Ledger users because there are some intricacies with how Ledger Live works uh, that mean that it's actually easier to get yourself into trouble uh, in this way using Ledger Live than any other wallet software I'm aware of. Though this same thing can apply uh, to any watch-only wallet or some other platforms. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop about content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. So I've got Ledger Live here and I've added some accounts and uh, basically these separate accounts I've added are actually for three separate wallets. So that could be uh, three separate seed phrases, it could be three separate ledgers, it could be uh, just three separate passphrases or maybe no passphrase uh, and two passphrases. It really doesn't matter. As far as Ledger Live is concerned, they are all completely separate devices and completely separate wallets. But the issue that you have with Ledger Live is that uh, Ledger Live actually, the way it works, is it creates a bunch of watch-only wallets. Because the way Ledger works is it will actually only uh, share the public keys of a particular currency when you have that app open on your Ledger device. So uh, Ledger kind of has to uh, create lots of watch-only wallets just because of how it is designed. The really important thing to understand is that it doesn't matter if you wipe your device, change the seed, uh, add a passphrase or do any of this, Ledger Live will never automatically reflect those changes. You will always need to manually add the new accounts into Ledger Live and manually remove the old one. I've also got these other three accounts at the top, which all just have a balance of zero and they're all named the same. Unless you actually have this ledger there with you and connected into Ledger Live, there's absolutely no way that you could work out which one of these accounts belongs to which seed uh, which device or which passphrase. If you find yourself in this situation where you have multiple accounts in Ledger Live and you're not sure which one belongs to which, uh, the only way to work out which one actually uh, corresponds to the ledger that is currently plugged in and unlocked is to do the verified receive workflow. If you select an account that matches what is on the ledger, you'll get this screen here that actually will like, ask you to verify the address on the screen. Uh, that you can do and then approve. Whereas if you run it on one of these other accounts that was created using either a different seed or a different passphrase, uh, you'll get this error message here. that says, please check your hardware wallet with the recovery phrase or passphrase that belongs to that account. If you're just using your account and you ever see this message, what that means is that the wallet that Ledger Live is trying to use doesn't actually match what is on your device. So you can actually quite easily go through and just try and work out which of your accounts belong with the device and which ones don't. The thing to understand about Ledger Live is that when you add an account, it creates a fully functional watch-only wallet, uh, which can generate as many receive addresses as you like without ever reconnecting the ledger ever again, uh, even after you might have wiped the device. So if you get in the habit of using the, you know, don't have your device workflow because maybe you've got your ledger in a safe or something, or maybe you just don't have enough room on your Ledger Nano S to store all of the apps for all of the coins that you like to receive from time to time. Particularly if you've rekeyed your device, you might find yourself getting into trouble. Taking time to verify the address on the ledger itself isn't just about security, it's actually also about safety because it's a way of guaranteeing that the seed or the passphrase uh, on the ledger that you actually have connected right now is the one that Ledger Live is using to receive the funds, not some wallet attached to a seed that you maybe don't have anymore. So there you go. I don't mean this is a criticism of Ledger Live uh, in any way, uh, and it's actually only because Ledger Live is a very powerful piece of software that allows you to juggle multiple accounts from multiple devices and multiple passphrases all in a single interface, uh, that this kind of mistake is possible in the first place. I've used Ledger Live as an example in this video, but again, it's really important to uh, say that exactly the same principle can be applied to every single watch-only wallet that is out there. Uh, if you've got a watch-only wallet in Sentinel, in Electrum, or anything else like this, uh, you need to make sure that when you rekey your device, uh, get a new seed or add a passphrase, that you actually recreate your watch-only wallets as well, because they will never 
automatically update themselves to reflect uh, what is the current seeds and private keys on your hardware wallet. Thanks for watching, I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.